kick things off, right? Pavlox is Cade versus Risa Krakow. It's a big one. It really is. I mean, we're talking about the Poles. We're taking on the Bulgarians. And it's going to be an interesting already, considering the changes that these two teams have taken on at the start of this year. But my word, we're in for a treat. I think so, too, especially with how the form is for these uh, these two teams right now. Skade, yes, they had a bit of a downturn, especially when they had some roster shuffles. But now, now that they're settling in, now that they've made their way all through the main Swiss stages, now that they've finally set foot through the door as far as the playoffs are concerned, they're looking pretty stable. And on the other hand, Wisa Krakow, they've actually had a really nice uh, uh, upwards trend of how their performance is. I think one of the key pieces that Wisa Krakow was missing was a solid AWP player. And I know it's been a while now, but after the introduction of Snatchy to the squad, he's been an entirely different beast. I think mm -hmm. one of the big, big, big storylines around Snatchy was how much better does he perform when he gets a better squad to furnish those assets, right? Well, anybody that was doubting him when he was on Ago, they've been proven wrong now because Snatchy, he is carrying the team. He is still sitting on a rating 2.0 of 1.18. Very good reason why they've gotten this man on the squad, and um, I, I just hope we can see even more of that today. Yeah, but of course, this is not the only best of three to be played out today. This is not the only only match in the round of 12 that will be played out, of course. As we did mention, we've got Skade versus Luiz La Krakow at the first uh, at the first hurdle, but we also have Mouse XT versus Ugentium. We have Eternal Fire versus Epix, and of course, Endpoint versus Gamer Legion. So, a lot of best of threes coming their way, trying to make their way into the quarterfinals to play against the Invites, Ecstatic Heroic, Dignitas, and Copenhagen Flames. So, the competition is only getting more fierce, and that's what we really love to see. But let's get into the nitty-gritty stuff right you already kind of mentioned the yeah. win and win action sort of on the uh, on on the whistler cracker side let's talk a little bit about skate absolutely i mean i i think our eyes are basically on bubble and dreamer right because they're the newest additions to the roster they were introduced to the roster at the start of the year and now it feels like skate is a very complete lineup Previously, it felt like I think Dennis Law had a bit of a clash with the rest of the squad. It didn't really feel like they stylistically complemented his AWP. But now, it's looking very different. I think they've got a little bit of everything now. They've got the IGL prowess. They've got Dennis Law on the AWP. We've got sh Ships being a massive rifler um, in a fashion that you barely ever expect from a anybody to be able to put up. Especially when, in when they're in the difficult spots to play as Ships is. So, you know, being aligned with all of this talent, I think Skid have a really reasonable shot at winning out this entire tournament even. I think they are, they have to be one of the teams that is up there. But one thing I do want to mention is that both of these teams have looked slightly inconsistent when it when it's come to beating out higher tier opposition. Yes, they've managed to get themselves on the top of the uh, on the top of the leaderboard. They're around that top 20 mark. But Converting games, there's quite a few losses. I mean, Wista Krakow, while we're looking at them, if we quickly look at the recent history, they had a tough time actually closing out wins against Ungentium. Uh, they, they lost entirely to Mouse NXT. They weren't able to put up a performance against Apex. And that's where it really starts to count when you're playing up against the big dogs. Yeah, really big, uh, tough competition coming their way. Uh, as you mentioned, Wizla Krakow having a tougher time in the main switch. But let's see what maps these guys will be competing on in this best of three in front, of course, being Van Dout straight from Wizla Krakow. Vertigo being the follow up from Skate. I'm glad we're not seeing that map. Not a big fan of it. And uh, <laughs> we won't be seeing that this time around. Mirage, though, being picked up. Overpass as well. Well, you expect the Bulgarian seem to go for that just to band out as well as you can ancient to be a decider absolutely and I, I i think it goes without saying that mirage is always going to be a bit of a coin flip for regardless of who you're playing uh skate of course it it, it really makes it easy for them to uh, to play in a puggy style especially because dennis law is the type of player that you can find dynamically opping all around the map but it is we saw crack house pick strategically so we do have to be a little bit more biased towards them on the other hand overpass that's a map that I do think that Skate are uh, heavily favored on, even though we used to crack out. They're not going to be any slouches on it either. So if it goes to a decider map, I wouldn't be surprised at all. And historically, I think these two teams are comprised of players that haven't really shied away from it. I think at the uh, it, it, somewhere in the, in, the, in the middle of 2021, uh, uh, or around the time when Ancient was a lot newer, Skate was actually one of the teams that was pioneering it. They were uh, incredibly good at playing it, especially against tier two opposition. And you often saw them trying to corner teams into playing Ancient. And when they did, they would coil around the team and basically suffocate them. So getting to the decider is 
definitely going to be a super interesting affair, but I do want to hear your thoughts on this, Pavlos. Who wins the first one? Are we going to a decider at all? Do we see a 2 and nil here? Because I'm honestly at a loss for words. So I think also the pick on Mir Mirage kind of comes with a weakness of Skate lately on that map, but let's see if that actually is the outcome this time around. If they've learned from the mistakes, we're heading directly into the server. No missing around. We want to see this matchup. Into the Bistro round we go, CT side, five sets of Kevlar. Okay, we're gonna skip out on utility altogether. But of course, we still crack out, do not have that privilege because they have to get a couple flashes, a smoke as well, to allow them to nestle into the B site. And looking at the setup of Skate, they're not exactly ready for it. They've got only one player at the ready to deal with this onslaught. Pick his dream onto the sideline, of course, looking at them as they drop. Good little pick and falls back into the safe. And ships won't have too much time to react to that. It seems that Whistler Krakow will simply just take over the site and claim it as their own as the rest of Skate try to recuperate. Yeah, this is going to be a very difficult retake, especially with these Glocks at close range. But they've not actually put themselves in good positions. Doesn't matter, though. Two kills already. Yeah, Rainmaker, all that is left quickly. His teammates no longer with him. The only thing he could, he could see if he walked into market would have been the fallen bodies of his comrades. Therefore, backs away, hands this off for Whistler Krakow, saving that Kevlar. Yeah, good decision. I mean, if you can carry that Kevlar over to the next round, that potentially means you have a scout rifle in your hands, and that can do quite a bit of damage. But we saw crack out. I think that setup was a little doom for Skate to begin with. Um, uh, of course, with how they were lined up in apartments, and you don't even have an insurance policy on the uh, that can easily help out from short. That's not really a recipe for success, and we saw crack out for that reason, end up winning at the first pistol round. Yeah, we had a very early look at the odds um, uh, at the start of this game, uh, from the pinnacle odds to be exact, and very, very close, right? Even though Skate had had a may way better performance than the, in the main Swiss, um, it, it seems that when you look at these two teams, there's not much that separates them. I think one of the things that will become clear in this playoffs is how these teams have managed to stabilize their rosters, right? Because to be perfectly honest about the ranking, I'm not too sure right now. You know, you've made your way into the top 20s, but actually putting your foot down and cementing it, that's a thats a bit of a different story. Sure, you can do it in the stats, but I really want to see them win out against tier 2 opposition consistently before they can sort of uh, wave that flag, right? But looking at Wiesa crack out into connector they go. Ooh, They're up against that's a, a first. By oh, Spiro saw that. I think he saw not a, a leg. They didn't, and he's going to have the smoke advantage as well. Mm, is he going to pre-fire though? They're waiting. He's got no reinforcements there for taking such a trade. Would be a toughie. Anticipating it, but the swing from Rainwaker is glorious. Quick headshot onto Sparrow, and it seems like this little force of theirs so far has gone well. Yetka not given the opportunity to gather that up. But Rainwaker wants to keep himself. His dominance over connector. Two kills, barely surviving. Only one point of health, while the rest of Wizzler Crack are wondering. Where on earth did our chances go? Dennis Law also is starting to connect with Hedge. Sobel finally taking Rainwake out of the uh, out of the equation. But Yekka is the next piece of this puzzle that needs to put into place. Slowly moving in, but Ships has found his way onto the back line. They need to move quickly before this Mincer Pincer is in the picture for them. Oh. Pobble very quick to react. It seems that Scale are winning out on all of their edges. Sobel, the only player to remain here with that Galilo. Ah, oh, finds one before he drops. Scale find the follow-up. If you're in the shoes of Wiesla, you've definitely made a couple mistakes here, right? You go down middle, you wait a while, you allow Skate to get full information and reposition, and one of the things I really would have liked to see Wiesla do is maybe go for a, ha for, for a faster play, simply because it allows way too much time for Skate to uh, recuperate any misinformation, right? They have a player and connector, even if you don't win that duel out, you've given it enough time for the rotations. And Risa Crack, I think one of their biggest mistakes was just going one by one. They didn't have any trade frag potential at all. And it's come back to bite them, bringing them down to the pistols. Now they're in, the, in kind of similar shoes as to what Skade was in the previous round. Skade, on the other hand, they've, they're fully locked and loaded. They've even picked up an AK-47. Wouldn't be too difficult of a round as long as they can play their chips right. So early made there to do damage with the Snatchy and Sobel. You gotta find some information, maybe an alleyway and be denied. Shit's being a solid gatekeeper with that AK. Does get damaged up substantially, therefore we'll think twice before taking an next trade. A deagle shot could do it on his body. The rest of Wizzler Krakow rerouting their efforts, hoping that their attention towards apartments would have 
allow Ske to move in that direction, but no. Resilient and as ever, the Bulgarians will hold. No real reason to switch things up at this point. Clear advantage, Rainmaker. The next player to be contested and seems he's got a good line and a good idea of how he wants to deal with this one. Good flash coming through from Dennis Law. Yedka able to find some damage, getting a kill onto Bubble, but I'm afraid the fact that Skate know where he is and uh, know how they want to play this out is the end of his life and this round for Whistler Krakow. As we know, it's Skate get the lead. Nothing you could have really expected from Whistler there. I mean, they were down to pistols and they will be once again. The decision to buy up Desert Eagles and Kevlar and all that in the previous round comes back to bite them. Not even AK, they're not even going to have that one person with a solitary AK. And this isn't really a particularly good start for Wiesa Krakow. When you've won the pistol round, if you lose the second one, you're always going to be threatened economically. And that's something we're seeing exhibited on the uh, from the side of Skade. Um, on the other hand, they've also allowed Skate to build up a monstrous economy as soon as this round is over. As long as Skate can keep four, three weapons alive, they're going to start uh, flirting with that $6,000 mark. And it just makes that CT side much more difficult to deal with. Of course, this is a meat grinder round. We saw Krakow just awaiting Slaughterhouse. What can the cr little crickets do? I mean, yeah, they're not right-clicking right now, but I love to call the, cl mm -hmm. the Glocks the crickets. Double jump boost. An attempt to kind of spread out this attention. Seems to have worked on one end at least, but it's a fair clean up here from Skate. Bring in the janitors. They've done their job. Mm -hmm. Mop, bucket, soap, all that. And an op Asimov, if you do choose to get one from Skin Baron. Ooh, the big boy voucher codes are dropping now. 10 years off of your first purchase. tb.gg slash skin baron is the place to be. Type that code before anybody else, and you can get 10 years off your first purchase. Now, we get a chance to see both teams locked and loaded. You've got weaponry on either side. A little disappointing to not have money available for Snatchy. He did buy up in the second round as well, which really uh, debilitates any chances of him having that equal duel with the AWP. But look at how we so Cracker are playing this. A bit... A bit scattered along on the default. Dance Law has gotten information around apartment, so he's going to be very careful about rotating. In the meantime, though, the bomb is trying to work a pick on middle. And I'm not sure if I really agree with this, especially because of how difficult it is to actually make the bomb useful from that position. Perhaps if it was in apartments, you can get a quick plan off. But a lot of the time, we'll have to come down to making sure that the president is alive here. Seems like so bomb. And as, as any attempt to open things up is quickly run down, so Skade... Early pick goes their way. Whistler Crack on the other fronts don't seem to be too interested in taking this aggressively. Bubble's been spotted, Goofy. Entertaining the idea of approaching him in a way, but no. So far, they hold back. Have full mid control, and Skade are happy to give it away. Oh, yeah, these smokes aren't doing any favors for Whistler Crack out. Slowly moving up connector. Sparrow wants to be the first man in, but there's two players ready and waiting on the other side. This cannot be an easy duel, Pavlov. This could be a good contact approach, though. One flash and three players moving through with one player only watching it right now. But the smoke dissipates and Bubble finds it just in time. Snatchy looking to put peek past this, but they've already set up a crossfire. Dreamer on pilots can be also a menace. Uh -huh. Bubble won't be challenged anytime soon. Skade are making like, making this look easy. Whistler crack out bringing in the big guns, but it seems they're greeted by even bigger ones. Rambos are up against them. Skade have mowed them down. Ten seconds and yet got everything to play with, but nothing to to do, looking at back, you know, fall back from that, but will not be given permission. Skate with four, sees the lead. This is honestly too slow of a play style for, um, for it to work against Skate, especially when you're playing against a team like Skate that doesn't like to go aggressive unless it's Dennis Law play, uh, taking some initiative. You're allowing them to have full information. You're allowing them to have full control of connector. They've basically got metal as well because there's absolutely no control from you in short. And you've given up early info on apartments as well. Um, that's a recipe for disaster, for sure, because by the time you actually get any information, by the time you're about to set foot onto a bomb site, there's three players from Skate that have already rotated in. That's exactly what happened. Although, those three players weren't even required because of how good one of these players was and just mowing them down as they walked in through connector. Back to the pistols we go. Ooh, Rainmaker to the back end here. Heavily challenged with the crack. I think I've heard you, and they're amped up their, play, their pace. 
Right. Throw it onto the gas pedal with Dennis Law. He's able to find some flame kills here. Whizzler Crack are actually doing a sizable amount of damage. Not only do they get some kills, they find they went to the site and plant the bomb. All right, they've got an AK to work with. Sparrow, though, you've given up your audio information. Ships. Oh, All you've got to do is click a nice little head, and there it is. Sobel falls, and Skade continue with their winning way. Because scary. Now, the question is, Pavlos, how quickly do they start to come back from this? Because, I mean, yeah, you've gotten... It's gotten scary, but it's not the scare. It's not this type of scary where a clown comes out of a gutter and pulls your leg in. It's more of the type of scary where you go to a 3D cinema and you watch a scary movie and you come back and you kind of, you actually kind of enjoyed it, right? It, it, it was a fun experience. <laughs> You're actually bringing up my clown phobia. Wow. Okay. Mm. How dare you? Yeah, it's not that scary. It absolutely Wait, is not that less. scary. Yes. How come you have a how, how come you have a clown phobia? I thought waking up in the morning, the exposure therapy would have fixed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not quite, not quite. Yeah, we live in a society, man. We live in a society. <laughs> Dennis, look, here we go. Good shot onto Yadka. It seems like he's been getting caught off a lot. It's a little unfortunate, but lots of props to Dennis Law as well, who's willing to take the initiative and. Play in difficult, precarious spots that we used to crack are having a tough time dealing with already. You've lost a member, and now you kind of find yourself scratching your head. The bomb is left all the way back, so that's already 15 seconds off of your budget. In the meantime, no information is being gained, only keeping Skade at bay with this Molotov. So at least mid control isn't entirely given up, but look at this mistiming, not waiting for the smoke just yet. Dennis Law gets one. Quick reaction there to trade it back. Quite un uncoordinated here by Whistler Krakow. Not really doubling up, looking for trades. Well, I mean, you can't really expect trades to go well, especially when you started off on the back foot. But still, it's uh, it's a difficult endeavor trying to find your way back in when the round has already set you back in your ways. Goofy, that's what you needed. A quick pick to go your way. Now, in the rounds of possibility, as they do have a 2v3 disadvantage, very doable if they find a pick towards the A site. That's the thing, though. Ringwaker's not going to give away on that easily. But he may be doing that because Sobel has just opened things up. Now they need to find a cross onto the site. Despite the, the bomb can get planted, but it's a two-on-two. -two. I think the biggest difficulty here is that Goofy only has 27 points of health. But they might be making it a little bit more difficult for themselves by having ships rotate all the way over from ramp. So the healthiest player will be there at the bomb site the latest. But he's been booking it. Has to go as fast as possible, and now they've got two angles to work off. Bubble. Back end here. Is the Krakow. Pulling their ground ships. There you oh. go. That's the caveat they needed, but Sobel's keeping it close. It's a one-on-one -on -one duel, and he's got the line up. Oh. Right, ships can't connect the pieces. Sobel collects them for him. Whizzle Krakow get themselves back in. Probably the worst thing about that engagement was that Sobel wasn't actually ready. He... He committed all the major sins of a one versus one. He climbed a ladder, he had a flashbang out, he had his position given away. Uh, I'm not sure how he ends up winning out that duel regardless, but you know what? It's a saving grace for Wisa Krakow. They need it around. Yeah, we get, get a chance to see that in the replay. But man, Wisa really needed that because the start wasn't really amazing. So if something does fall through for them, I'm happy. I want to see Skate being a little pressured. Dennis Law and Snatchy both exhibiting signs of not being highly rated rating 2.0 players although they are okay sneaky man back away <laughs> spray on is keeping it close and eventually has to drop here snowball and snatch looking to aggress the dreamer still holds on the man's a beast but still skate at a disadvantage yetka is able to make the difference sparrow setting up a crossfire with him quickly by moving on to tetris dennis though not gonna fall back on this awp shot and he knows he needs to bring his team back into the play Oh dear, though. Oh, there's a player yeah, no. right behind him, and that will be his downfall. Whistler Crack, I'll find a follow up. Yes, yeah, after that missed duel initially, Snatch just comes all the way back to take De Dennis Law to the grave. And Whistler, they're building up some momentum. And probably the silver lining around this is that Skade will very quickly start to run out of money as long as Whistler can play their cards right. Now, one thing I do have to mention, though, is that Dennis Law has been probably the biggest game changer here on the server because sitting on 12 kills and 4 deaths, playing dynamically all around the map, he's been the X factor that's consistently caught Weasla off guard. So at any point in time, if Dennis Law isn't able to have as much control as he does right now, you're going to see a massive shift in the scoreline. Early nade to connect a little bit of damage, bring them within one-shot territory of the M4. 
In the meantime, we still want to reroute their efforts to the B apartments, and there's only one man waiting for them. It's ships with an AWP. That double Ooh. up. Let's see if that works out. They're actually moving in quickly, and this is crucial enough because Bubble is pushing up towards mid and could get be punishing Spero, but that will not be the case. Ships is caught off here, and this could be where he ends up dropping. Spero's already gone in two, and he so wants to follow it up as well. Dreamer, the only player remaining, but it won't be too long. Whistler Cracker with an explosive start to this round. Actually, incredibly done. The fact that they have early mid control, um, and they're willing to throw down nades into connector as well, tells me that they're conditioning Skate into thinking that it's going to be once again a slower style of play. They're going to have control outside ramp, maybe they have control outside middle, who knows? Because as Skate, you haven't really had any of your X-Factors actually push in to try to get that information. And based off of this information deficiency, that's what that, that's what Weasla try to capitalize. They uh, quickly rush into apartments. Having four players there, there's not a chance that uh, ships can individually win that duel just with an AWP and watching apartments. Will he survive? Will he survive? No, he will not. Crouch peak spray there by Goofy at the end. Damn, okay. We're keeping things close here. And at this point, Eco Collapse, Free Squid Skate, not going to be easy for him. thing is, when the game started, it looked incredibly one-sided. And I know that 5-1 to one is probably not the biggest scoreline to be worried about, right? But... I didn't expect it to turn uh, turn around this quickly, especially with Dennis Law balling out of control. I thought this was going to be uh, one of those games where your uh, where your squad basically has all positive KDR sitting around a minimum of two, simply because you have too much control going into it. But we slip. They quickly get back on their horses, or at least on their little ponies. Oh, the swing comes out a little bit too late here by Dreamer. They're able to juggle it nicely. Yeah, no kills go to Skade's way. Uh, not really anticipating that Whistler Cracker could um, could really drop the ball on that, but still, equalized scoreline. This is a very important round. You say that it's an important round, but I think it's even... Uh, I, I think the importance of it is probably a lot more if you're, in, if you're looking at it from the shoes of Skade, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, they they basically bought down entirely, and obviously they don't really have a choice other than to do that. Their economy is going to struggle quite a bit if they can't manage to connect it. But look at how quickly we are playing this into short. They go. They've got a connector smoke as well. Yeah, your first man in. He's already dropped Dreamer, and there's going to be support from B apartments. That makes it very difficult for ships oh, to make comfortable. Oh, this place. Oh, okay. Ships, he'll find comfort. At least for now. Whistler Krakow's like newly found aggression seems to have worked out, but now put to a pause. How do they wrap around this bomb? Moving away from apartments at this point. Therefore, maybe a complete wraparound is what they're looking at. Absolutely love the ability of uh, Weasel's IGL to make that call, right? You're, you're playing super passively. It's not working out. You've al you're already down 5-1. to one. It's like they read my mind. Just get through it. Switch up your play style because whatever you're doing right now isn't working. They do that. And it's suddenly a very different looking Weasel. And now they head to, uh, o over towards the ace site. There's two players waiting, Rain Waker and Denisaw, but they can very easily both be neutralized with just a solitary smoke, although Rain Waker does have a decent position to catch them with an off angle. Ooh, damage early. Rain Waker to the side, Molly at the back side, meaning that they are going to isolate Rain Waker in and there's no refract potential. He's all by himself right now, but Ships is able to help out from mid, and that's what you need. Rain Waker getting the job done, but still... The trades don't really go in favor of the Poles. It's all down to Yedka. Three players against him. Not much else to work with. Barely breathing at this point. Ships puts him to his grave and Skate retake the lead. For Weasley, it's not really too much too much more than a scratch. I mean, they, they've got all the money in the world that they can uh, pl play around with. But I think the odds are going to be very, uh, very inconsistent throughout this game because it's going to be very difficult to predict who wins this one out but if you if you think you've got the inside scoop go ahead and check out our partners over at pinnacle the place to be for betting but make sure you're doing it responsibly 18 and over only okay that's more like it we've seen yega be caught off at the start but this time around sobol is able to open things up a little bit Disbalance the CT side, and now we're seeing a bit of a standoff here. 
Snatchy, there you go. Bobble is out and the refrag is gone. Rainmaker pushing through, but Snatchy's not oh, going to fall ha, ha, for ha. that. Very nicely repositions and picks it up. Beautifully done. I really like that Snatchy had the full awareness to wait out for that close push. Expecting to be refragged, he positioned himself nearly perfectly. Dennis Law and Dreamer, now what are you going to do? The question is, do you quickly huddle together to try to save weaponry, or do you still want to stick on for this round? Dreamer, not making his position known just yet, allowing him to creep forward, but that call has been made. Oh, Goofy, uh, he's done his job. The B site fully opened up. This is going to be it. Yeah, we still crack. I want to keep this a close score. So for us, today we're starting off the game in a very close manner, right? We're, we're starting off the Taze matches in the round of 12 in the playoffs. And an exciting game on a Mirage right at the start. You're looking at just a big geographical rivalry. You're looking at two of the uh, of the closest the rankings you can have you're looking at teams number 22 and 24 um and you're looking at the fact that they're playing mirage the puggiest map in all of counter-strike history minus dust two uh <laughs> with, the, with the with the door still visible of course you're gonna have a close game man six to six but I have a feeling that this is going to be very different when the side switch, because right now, Weasla have a monstrous performance on the T side, and you have to keep in mind that the majority of stage round come off of the initial momentum, while Weasla Krakow, they've been fighting tooth and nail for every single round. This is one of the very few times they actually start to feel comfort, because there's only Desert Eagles and uh, maybe an AWP they've saved up from the previous round available. I think heading into the playoffs, it was it, it was just a matter of time before Bubble and Dreamer's medal would be tested, right? Finally made it here. Now up against a big gun. Dreamer, not a chance. Ships though, could get something done with a hero AWP. Quite a risky position to be in. He's overwhelmed. They're gonna dismantle him piece by piece. Play with him as if he's just food. And Bubble. Won't uh, survive for too long. They do find some trades in this, some damage to be found. Rain Waker could definitely take some further weaponry out of the hands of Whistler Krakow, and that's definitely what he's looking for. But other than that, Sobel cleans it up, and Whistler Krakow, albeit having a sh kind of a slow start, they've completely switched things up. It really all came down to them very quickly recognizing their pacing, and Previously, in the way that Dennis Law was playing, he was playing it dynamically around the map. They were getting picked off because their passive style of play ultimate, uh, ultimately meant that they would be going one by one. But instead of doing these slow defaults, now they're trying to throw a spanner in the works, right? And they've been th throwing quite a few spanners for quite a while. These spanners, of course, greeting the heads of Spade. Managing to get seven rounds already. We saw Krakow now in contention for being the half victors. Not something we would have expected with how that initially went. This round is looking a lot more like the start of this game. This Rainmaker opens things up. Goofy, look at that. Could have gone wrong, but is able to deliver. Dennis Law trades it, so Skate is still ahead. Shout. Lisa Krakow slowly gaining control over the A site. They've only Ooh. had one member in. Nice shot from Yedker. All right, you can't just out aim an AWP like that. And the Molotov will give them a bit more space to work with as well. In the meantime, though, they've got to get the bomb here. Bubble managing to take out Yedker, but on the other side of the map, Snatchy's done some of his dirty work as well. Oh, Skate, no, they've isolated the players, though, so if they can be able to find the first one quickly, that's going to be them able to find access towards the site now to the check connector in time. Well, it's not even going to be that, right? Snatchy is wrapped around from spawn. So they will be finding their way onto the site, but do they have their place positioned correctly? One on site, the other one's still around spawn. They themselves are isolated. Statue could really work this out. Oh dear, though. The bomber's out into the open. The only thing you can do is go f go in the middle and Skade have set up the crossfire. There's no way you can check this angle in time and Skade equalize seven to seven. Man, we're in for a treat. I'm trying to think of where this game is going to go right now. And 
a lot of that previous round came down to Wiesa Krakow once again exhibiting signs of their previous gameplay where they were playing it a little slower. And the fact that it still ends up not working out doesn't tell me that Wiesa are playing it poorly. It, 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 it instead tells me that Skate are still stylistically playing it in the same way as they were initially because that's why their, their style ended up working out, winning them out in a round against super passive gameplay anyway. I think Skate have... Uh, they are showing a tendency to be set in their ways, if anything. Which is a little surprising, especially with the roster stuff recently, but can't really boil it down to just one map. Bubble has a small one-way smoke to work off of. We the crack house, slowly creeping up middle. I wanna hop in the jungle. Okay. Goofy, full control of the nest. Bubble takes some damage, but this is where Goofy comes into play. Everyone's turned their attention towards Connect, and there you go. <gasps> Trigger Discipline. Watch both of them! <laughs> and I'll send this little walk past them. But still runs it up very nicely. Yetka finally alive in this game, delivering where he has to. This final round of this half is definitely showing up. Skate on a massive disadvantage right now. The reason that ends up working out for them, and partially why Skate are so comfortable allowing that boost to happen, is because that's the key word, right? It, it, it was a boost. It wasn't them running off of the bench into jungle. And you don't really see that happen too often anymore. Um, and th th there was some confidence from Skate that there wouldn't be two players that have crept up underpass already because Bubble had a nice little uh, smoke Ooh. to play off of. But yeah, I'm already discounting this round, man. <laughs> I mean, what is Skate even going to do here? Dreamer falls. It's 8-7 to seven for Wisa Krakow. And it's actually an incredible little comeback, if anything. Yeah, really good start from Rizla Krakow, considering they're on the on the T side now. Now they've got that comfort written for them, right? We know how they, they've been playing around Mirage on that CT lately, attributed a lot of their wins to kind of this type of play. And I really love how they've started to play around this, right? It was a slow start, but they've woken up and their strategical minds have just lit up. Honestly, the biggest problem for me in, uh, on the server right now, personally, is that it's not that Weasler are aren't being dynamic or anything. It's more that Skate have really been stuck in their ways. They've stylistically just been playing the, the, the same round over and over. And I want to see if that changes on the T side. Of course it should. Snatchy, first man to receive as they start contesting middle. Molotov. Ready out. There's some mix of Molotov yet. He's about to have a scuffle with Dreamer. You've got two pistols, but Dreamer has a heart of gold. Takes you out, and the bombs drop now. So much info being given up. Well, they're just really wanting me to become a fan of them, right? Bring out two duelies. Well, how about that? The rest of them just clean up as nicely as that. Just put some uh, Kleenex all over it. Just wipe it down. Spitting clean. You can see that. They, they can see themselves. It's basically a mirror at this point. Mm -hmm. Double it. They're just now around the corner for Wisa Krakow, and... The chances for Skate to fight back won't be coming uh, coming around anytime soon. I mean, they're going to have to wait an entire round just to allow them to hop into the meat grinder. And the problem for me here is that Wisa Krakow, they, they're they now playing the CT side. They're playing with the pistol round advantage. They've got... Uh, they're going to have the lead as well. So not really too many win conditions that, that are easily lining up for Skate. But with some momentum... If they can figure out the game plan for Weasel, I do think things can still change around. One thing I've noticed both of these teams do on eco rounds is that they like to wait and actually anticipate the push. So they don't want to get mowed down by MP9s. They don't want to uh, be overwhelmed by M4s. So we see... A lot slower pistol rounds or slower eco rounds than we're actually used to inst instead of just walking in and allowing yourself to be mowed down. Then to connect where they go. Yeah, Spare spotted them out. And uh, yeah, they're just going to have a fun here. Just clean as that. But man, yeah, on on honestly, it's it it's starting to fall into place nicely for Wizla Krakow. Obviously, this is early days in this particular half of Skate have yet to find their tempo, but... The, f the fact that the economy is building early here for the Poles is not a good sign for Skate, and it's showing on the pinnacle odds, right? At the start, Skate were favored, but now that's just switched around. It's still okay, however, yeah. because we, we, it, it's not Skate's map pick. They're still doing a pretty close job, and I think uh, 
things are going to be a lot closer in the second map, which is why I've uh, uh, I've been teetering towards thinking that this has to go to a decider. I I don't expect this game to end in two maps, not at all, Matt Boss. Quite a big surprise. Oh, nice Ooh. little boost. Oh, they've taken way too much time here. Instead, they're going to abandon it. No, Ooh. wait it out, and it still ends up working out. A little sloppy, but it works. Well, Skate Linked are there for a while, which gives them the opportunity to give it, give it another go. Rainmaker finds his way onto the site. This could be their opening. That is what they need. Rainmaker looking for the second spray down. He does get it, which means they have opened up the A site. That's what they need. And now, with better numbers, can work around this. Dennis Law, with the superior weapon in top of mid, will take his opponent it down. Skade, finally something going their way. The bomb down, guaranteed round, and uh, the good thing about this for Skade now is that they only have to deal with one Morrigan round. Before things start to get a little easier, they're going to have to take the full brunt of a locked and loaded gun round in the next round because they should have enough loss bonus. That 1400, that e even the 1900 being added, they'll bring them up to around four thousand dollars average i believe on the squad and with goofy having a weapon as well being able to drop it should be no issues as far as buying is concerned but that just comes down to being a pretty flawless round from skate winning out their aim duels walking into the site and you didn't really see too much suppressive utility being deployed by risa krakow i thought initially they'd be able to delay the push but no that's not the case at all By round all across the board now. This is uh, a new frontier. A chance for Skate to bring things back in their favor before he gets out of hand, before Whistler Krakow have got too much comfort. Oh, that actually gives Yegkro a nice little angle to, work angle to work off of, but Skate do not even want to aggress this. Instead, Dreamer will stay all the way back, allow ships to be the sole member that works up middle. And look at how the Wista are actually playing this, right? They've got du double attention over towards Connector. They've entirely abandoned ramp with only one player watching the uh, off angle. And they're going to have to deal with a lot of trouble here towards the B site. Oh, Bubbles already pushing through. He spotted out one of the players and he's got some bullets with his name on. But Sobel says no to that. Skate, take control by eliminating Sobel. But now they're damaged up. The bomb can get on site, which is the crucial part. But Rainwaker... It, it seems to be stuck off of this right now. Yevka's got the good liner, waiting for the smoke to pull through. Whereas Lekarak, I've got a tough uh, crookie to crumble at this point. Trying to peek off of the smoke. Yetker doesn't have any information at all. Skate have everything under lock and key. Snatch Maybe Snatchy can get the angle here. All right, oh. he spots the player, but Dreamer survives with only four points. Oh, Goofy, though, wants to keep things close here by putting the pressure on them towards market. There's also a short approach coming through right now from Sparrow, but how important can that be? But spotted out by Dennis Law, gives away his position. Goofy will attempts to bring his team back into it. Yetker is also good for his trade. You Ships know. is all that remains, and it looks like they want to go for him. People out, that's the first head, and now he stops the defusal. Goes for another swing. Ooh. Ships, what a clutch was that! A 1v2 at the end puts Skade back on the ninth scoreboard. And that's the star rifler potential I was talking about. Ships, even when the odds are turned against him, he doesn't need an AWP, he doesn't need a massive investment to be an impact player. There it is. Ships, nice little one, we, one versus two to close things off. Nine and ten now. Skate slowly inching back into the game, and this round's gonna be a lot easier. Pavlov just salivating over the prospect of G just USPs, and Ships has earned this meal. Bon appetit. Mhm. Mm what's on the menu up front? Dennis Law gobbling up Sparrow. Tasty. That is his. Yeah, that, that that's just appetizers though. Just snack. I'm not going to slowly move in. It would actually be very dangerous if Skate end up winning this uh, this map out because that severely batters the confidence of Wiesla Krakow and then they have to play a map that Skate are super comfortable with. Overpass, I don't think it's something that Wiesla Krakow are going to feel uh, incredibly comfortable on at all. And historically, Skate have been a lot more solid on Overpass. I believe they have, what's, what's that, uh, over 70% win rate? Yeah, it's 80% win rate for them 
And the only team they've lost against recently is Saw. Before that, they've won every single game. They had a close game against Apex as well. So, Overpass is not something you're gonna get by easily on, but we still, maybe they've got something in store for us. AWP comes out, Snatchy. This is where he's going to be enabled, because I think that's something we were waiting for throughout the entirety of the ter terrorist side. Snatchy playing the AK-47, of course. Sure, he's an amazing player in, a, in all regards, but one thing that really sticks out like a sore thumb is how much sheen he has when it comes to the AWP. So CT side, he's got a chance. And I want to see how the rest of the members can support this. Ooh, already. Lightning fast. Just how he likes seeing Snatchy. Mirage was one of the maps he used to struggle with. But doesn't seem to be the case this time around. Find the impact where is necessary. Rufi. There you go. Oh, Upper okay. hand, Sparrow puts the XM to the test. That's a good weapon to hold. Ships can't do much. It means that Rainwake is all to himself. Bomb completely exposed to the elements. But have was the cracker figured it out? Can they see it right now? I don't think so. Because, well, I think Yedgar might have made the call, but mm. the fact that Wiza Cracker are being so diligent just told me, oh yeah, there it is. But at the same <laughs> time, they knew where Rainmaker was, right? So as long as they control the exits, there's nowhere Rainmaker can mm -hmm. go. Wiza Cracker up once again, but they've allowed Skate to build up some economy. They've got AKs, they've got an AWP in there. But that's probably going to be one of the biggest deciding factors, right? It's that Dennis Law, now that he's still on the AWP, it doesn't really benefit the squad as much as it did on the T side. Um, uh, sorry, on the CT side, because he's not going to be enabled as much. If you recall, in the first five rounds, Dennis Law had like 12 kills, but now he's sitting on only 18. So he's sort of been absent from the server after those first six rounds. Snatchy. Oh. Ooh, Dennis still finds it quickly, though. Yeah, and that is not an equal trade because you've lost your star AWP player. For the price of a rifler. And Skade, they want to fully capitalize on this. Let's see where the bomb goes. On to apartments, but this is being cleared out. Sobble wants to nestle himself into underpass, and by the time he does, perhaps Skade will lift it unchecked. All hmm. right, Rainwaker, you're kicking things off, and in the meantime, the bomb's about to join you. It's a bit tough now for Whizzler. Skade seemed to unravel this round in their favor. The A site can slowly become theirs. They still have utility to take it on, but Whistler Cracker have been given an opportunity to wrap towards it. But with that smoke, it indicates that Whistler Cracker want to play the slow. They themselves are a CT smoke, you know. They may want to have a one way there between ticket booth, but other than that, scared of taking their time. And Whistler Cracker are asking the question Are they going back to the B site now? Stick it to A. It seems that the answer is going to be the latter, but how much the Whistler crack I know? Good for them. Is all that all three players are close by can deal with this. 20 seconds. Skates start to move in. First onto the site is Bubble with the bomb. Goofy, when do you swing by? That's the first, keeping it close. Three versus three, and here comes a swing. Dreamer holds on and keeps Bubble alive, having his teammates back. It's all down to Sobel. All of a sudden, things are not looking great for him. Skade are very composed to pick the bomb right into the center of the site. None of them need to pick. Sobel, I need to check all of these corners. Spots out an elbow, but Bubble rips his body apart. Skade with the equalizer. Yeah, that was just a trifecta of players watching that one angle. Even if you've got X-Ray on, there's no chance you can get all three kills just by courtesy of the angles. And here it is. The win condition that Skade were waiting for. The money broken down for Weisla. AWP not in the hands of Snatchy, and I think from the get-go, there was a lot of responsibility on Snatchy's shoulders. He had to get through that without losing his life. But Dennis Law being able to pick up the kill in the previous round just made it a lot easier for his team to navigate. But on to A site we go. Few Deagles in the mix, B250s as well. We're back at the buffet thing. Yeah, Rain Waker knows you're not going to get up to that. Barrows finds him himself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Should be clean. 
Man, this game is actually really back and forth, right? We had Skade being ahead at the start, then Wizzler Krakow having a resurgence, ending the half with there. They are favorable. Then keeping it going, but Skate, now it's their turn, right? It's a it's a tug of war. Okay, that's a lot of damage. Goofy is able to hit the last shot onto ships. And they've actually damaged up two, two players yet. So, like, two rifles gone. And they're eager to get some more. Okay, Denistal will say no more to Sobel. Goofy looks to drop away. Bubble is there to hear him. And picks him up as well. So, Skate on top. And I think economy damage is probably the least of Skate's concerns. They just look so incredible. And you can see the odds shifting once more. Skate slowly winning this little tug of war. Pinnacle, of course, is the place to be if you want to win more with low margins and high limits. TEB.GG slash live odds for all the information. Double up setup. Snatching Sparrow. Now both on that orping duty. Dennis Law, though, the only Alpo of his team. He's seeing if he can find a gap with that smoke. There's a flash in, Snatchy. Ooh, I felt that. That timing, Bubble nestles himself in, and that's the advantage. The rest of the team kind of space shovels, spots out ships, and you can't take that space that easily. Oh, hitting the shot to Dennis Law as well. Doubles it up onto Rain Waker. Now that will hinder their confidence moving in onto the site. Scratch that. Oh, Bubble oh. somehow felt that he wanted a breath of fresh air and has a stroll onto the site. Interrupted abruptly. And now it's down to a two on two with a bomb into no man's land. And they have no clue that Sobel is there as well. And with the interception that is eventually going to come on from short, it's such a difficult duel to be taking. Dreamer, although being the healthier player alive, he's got to take that first duel and at least open up the bomb site. They have no idea oh the player CT, but now they spotted the jungle player Sobel gets the first opening duel and Dennis Law, he's going to be left all to his loans on AWP, wants to be tucked into the back pocket because he knows that's going to be a much better affair. That's the back away with us. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not looking great for Dennis Law and Skade right now. Was the crack out back at it, man, it back and forth. You talked about money not being too much of an issue for them. But it slowly can become it, right? And was Lekaraka getting this win? When it seemingly should have been Skaze, right? They were the ones to first find the opening. But Snashy is just too big of a menace. Even with the auto jump, right? You saw that little yep. hop. And he continues to deliver. Dennis Law, of course, seven seconds left. Shouldn't be too difficult for him to save this weapon. And he realizes that an AWP in the back pocket along with 5400 is a much better investment than just going out, losing his AWP, and losing all of his money. And you talked about how money can still catch up to them. And that's probably one of the most scary things to be, uh, uh, scary positions to be in, right? Last vestiges of the game, you open your wallet, nothing. Just flies. And a button. Mm-hmm. You think it's a coin? That reminds me, pick that, it up. That reminds me of that one. Uh, what, what, what was that frame from? From SpongeBob, where like they pull someone, something out of the wallet, and it's it, it, it's a snail, a, a button, a, yeah, a, a every, safety pin. Every cartoon ever. <laughs> every cartoon <laughs> yeah. ever. They do it always. But Dreamer, quick opening here. Can they maintain it though? The answer to that is a great big fat no, because Goofy is actually bringing themselves back. Yet going on off angle, Ringmaker. There's no way you will perceive that position, and Skade. Again, collapse where they stand tallest. And was Krakow determined to put themselves into the driver's seat instead? Dreamer and Dennis Law, I mean, they've got barely a chance here. The bomb is out in no man's land, and because of Goofy's position, it's just so hard to get it. As they go down ramp, they're going to have to, they're, they're going to have to give up their spot. Dreamer, if he can get the timing right, it can still be a manageable three versus two to deal with. Does he get the timing right here? And behind default, Snatchy has an off angle. Ooh, yeah, that's, it's Dreamer. too tough. Yeah, he needs to thread himself perfectly, and he just doesn't have the information for that. It's, at this point, it's not just Skade getting a perfect round. It's always like Krakow making a mistake. And uh, you could see that Dennis Law was w waiting for something like that to happen, but... Yeah, no. Whistler Crack, I know what has to be done here. This is uh, big boy business. This is playoffs. Yeah, they're just leaning on the idea of taking this AWP, taking this AK-47 into the next round. So even though they're going to have a force buy, they'll have a couple rifles already from uh, at the start of the round just to be able to give themselves a much better chance. Now, 
I'm a little surprised that we're not seeing too many signs of life from Skade, but that obviously comes down to Snatchy being an absolute madman when he does come to putting on that blue uniform. And as we get closer to the finishing scoreline, he becomes a much bigger threat to deal with. Oh, man. Uh, you talked a little bit about how Wisa Krakow, maybe they, they've picked up this map because they want to capitalize on the weaknesses of Skade it, as of recently, and maybe that's the case because their T-side, it doesn't look like it's very well fleshed out, right? A little shallow. Does seem to be the case, right? Caught off on some ends as well. I mean, even though they're able to find some really good openings, because we know that they've got insane opening firepower, it's just that it hasn't really connected to the latter stages of the rounds. Yeah, the full spy will come through as well. Yeah, Rainmaker buying up. I assume the rest will follow suit as well, but still not an easy endeavor. Fast round from Skade, already to up the connector. And look at how exposed their defenses are. They're gonna have to rely heavily on Sparrow to be able to hit his shots. But in the meantime, Snatchy wants to contribute. Comes in from short, gets ships away from trouble. Ooh, Bowl's like, give me that, give me that. I'm going in for it. Skade abruptly take up space. Really? Give no Whizzler Crack, give Whizzler Crack out no saying in the matter, right? <laughs> Just take the wind out of their lungs. And, and they're like, no, 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 shh, shh, shh. It's our turn. Sobble and Goofy, they, they've already discounted themselves. They, there's no chance they're going for it. At best, maybe a couple kills. But probably the biggest uh, takeaway from this round has to be enough money for Snatchy to get the AWP. And they're fine with that because Snatchy, uh, after this loss bonus, he should be able to buy himself an AWP. And as long as that win condition is available on the side of Weasla, they were, they were always going to have an incredible shot. Now, that's obviously not to take away uh, from the efforts of Sparrow, who's sitting on 19 kills right now. I think he's an excellent rifler. Same for the uh, uh, same for Goofy. Um, he's done such marvelous work over towards Short, not allowing them to get any control. But the reason I mention Snatchy so much is because just his sheer presence, just his sheer positioning on the map, ultimately dictates whether or not Skate even execute there, right? Because you're playing it dynamically, you can potentially get an initial pick off without taking damage, and that kind of impact without being affected, that's probably the biggest X factor for me. Skate? The moment you said X factor, I start thinking about singing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we already have enough of that in the team speak? Come on. Yeah, yeah. People on people live don't need to listen to us uh, sing. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, there's a reason our voices are being used as casters and not singers, right? Yeah, big reason. <laughs> big, big reason. <laughs> yeah, probably want to stay away from that SoundCloud. Yeah. And this production has been recording us behind the scenes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see here. Skade. I have a good idea of what they want to do here. Double-sided approach here onto the A site. Double smoke towards connector and jungle to kind of elude Whizzler Cracker. The false sense of security to move back up here. And this is exactly what they needed to do. Bait them out into the open. Ships open things up. But the rest of Whizzler Cracker still have three players onto the back end of the A site. Skade still have some unraveling to do and not much utility to do it with. Dennis Thor are waiting for Sober to push by this. But 45 seconds put Skade on a really tough position. The last piece of utility, the last Molotov put into the back site. But they're still a play in Firebox. Sparrow has now made his ground known, but Bobble is quick no. enough to get him. And now they can get themselves on site. The bomb has been planted and they've got full control. The question is whether or not we still even want to go for this. They immediately back out of it. They had one foot out the door already. Snatchy wasn't ready to proactively take a duel at all because he wants to save that AWP if push comes to shove. But look at this. Ships already waiting in jungle. He wants to try to ca catch them off guard. A smoke does allow them to comfortably back off into safety, but... Ooh, that, that can't be good. You've lost another rifle. 
And now Snatchy has the players on his trail as well. No, you've lost the up. Not only have you given up the 3 versus 5 retake, but you've also got nothing to show for it. Sobble, M4 in hand. What can you even do? Scrambling for kills? Sure, you've got a double. But now Skater on 14 points, and you've got no money to show for it. Um, for us, you may want to restart team speak for a bit, because for me at least, you sounded very, very robotic through that. I didn't want to interrupt you. We we're having a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, uh, restart, restart team speak. Uh, I think you've got some uh, robotic issues going on. I'm not quite sure where the sound is being picked up from, so I don't know. Um, yeah, do your thing. Hopefully everything's fine. Technical pause though. Being brought out, it seems that not only for us is sounding like a robot for me, but the rest of the, the rest of. Um, <laughs> Uh, the rest of the server might have be having an issue as well. I'll, I'll update you as soon as I have all the information available uh, regarding that. It seems there is a TeamSpeak issue all across, actually. Um, so it's n it's uh, it's not just for us being held uh, inaudibly. It's um, it's the uh, entire server having the same issue. So um, hopefully everything's being brought back. Are we good? I, I, I hear you fine. And apparently it's not Sorry, only you that I had a team speak issue. Under. Yeah, no, it's uh, apparently it wasn't no, only you. No, I had you. a completely separate duel. I was out here fighting the demons, dude. <laughs> like, there was a team speak issue? Question mark? Question mark? Hmm? Yeah, no, the, 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 the players seem to have the same issue. Ah. Oh, so the players also have a fight with their sleep paralysis demon on a daily? Ah. What? That's crazy. Uh, that, that is a mad coincidence. <laughs> and while doing a cast? Come on. They, they can't be that close. Can't be. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I sounded okay to the viewers. You though, probably did. It was, yeah, you it probably was did. Yeah. For us. Yeah. Did I hear? A, did, what, was I robotic for you? Production? No, you weren't. Ah, okay. All right. As I mean, we're back. Same as we've been paused. Mm -hmm. well, I think we need to give an overview of what just happened. If you guys are joining, this has been a back and forth, back and forth. And uh, it seems that Skade now have an advantage to work with. Very close rounds towards the end of it. They seem to found some space. The openings that they seem to be retrieving have carried through to the end, unlike the first rounds of this half. The only convincing set of consecutive rounds we saw was initially in the game when we or, or sorry, when Skade was up five to one. After that, it's really been a derby, right? Nothing has really gone the way you'd expect it to. And I do still think that Lisa Cracker have a bit of a fight in them. Skate 14 to 13 right now, and they're teetering on the edge of map point. 15, 13 shouldn't be too difficult for them to at attain, especially considering there's only pistols on one end. But Skate still want to play this carefully. They know where one of these rifles is because Sobble was spotted earlier as he dropped out, out, out of jungle. But Lisa want to put all of their chips onto the B site. Backing away, yeah, Skate, uh, uh, um... <clears throat> Double backing on this decision, kind of, right? Moving towards the A-side right away, and Ships is the only player kind of nestled into deep mid under as well. But it's the crack out kind of taking a gamble, right? Putting all their chips into one basket. Skate, though, I think, at this point, making the right decision. A-side, completely open. Let's not take any risks. Yeah, they're, they're just playing on two different servers right now. <laughs> You're watching Wisa Krakow be super diligent at defending an empty bomb site. Skater attacking incredibly diligently, by the way. An empty bomb site. So, are those demons we were talking about? Maybe that's what they're fighting them. Hmm. All I know is that Ships here is going to be a big menace. Ringmaker getting a nice quick one. Ships looking to fall back as he's hearing all the commotion. I'm just wanting to see if they're able to save this from uh, M4. It seems like Snatchy will get it and kind of fall back towards the B site, right? He's having none of that. Not really entertaining the idea of catching any exit frags. He knows how valuable it is. Mm -hmm. It just comes down to Snatchy being able to save that M4 oh, for himself. Oh, no. Ships. Is he going to get it? No, I think Snatchy might be okay. Yeah. Doesn't seem he's pushed in quick enough. Now he's running. Oh, now he's running. Oh, Does he check it in time? Ah! <laughs> okay. No, Snatchy didn't even want to close. Okay. He didn't even want to take that duel. You know you're not going to risk that if you're in that position. Yeah, hold your horses. Mm-hmm. Map point, though, for Skade. And this is Whizzler Cracker's map pick. How has this happened? I'm not sure, but 
If you look at the scoreline at the top, there have been a lot more consecutive rounds for Skade than Wisa Krakow. They fall comfortable, they've broken down the economy of Wisa time and time again, and Snatchy has one final dance to live out. He's got no uh, he, he's got no armor, glass cannon all the way, and Dennis Law's the first man in. Connector to be secured. Looking over the smoke. Oh, not connecting the shot just yet. <gasps> Yetker almost gets it, but Dennis Law through the smoke. He's making his life hell. And Skade. Now all they have to do is make their way onto a bomb site. Snatch, he wants to fight this three versus five. He still wants to hap make it happen, wants to defend the A site, but he's missing quite a few shots. He's all by himself though, therefore every shot he pulls has a, an extra piece of gravity to it. Bubble to the side, they both peek out, sound no, the no ships armor. on top. There's nothing Snatchy could have done there. He falls like a fly in the sky, batted down with a fly killer. Now Sobel so with a goofy feet. right now, two against three. They're very, very low, meaning that a couple of bullets should just clean them up very quickly. Pushing through, Serbo flash away. That will give an opportunity for Goofy to push through, and that gives him a chance to get another one. Spots out a weapon, and it's complete switch around. A one versus two right now for Dreamer, and oh. Goofy finds it. Whizzler Krakow not giving away on this round just yet. I cannot believe that round goes to the way of Whizzler Krakow. It was just down to Snatchy on the A bomb side. Rotations were f few and far in between, and. The fact that Snatchy can even hold them down for long enough is just a testament to how good he is. But at the same time, Sobble and Goofy coming in, just being incredible players, just out rifling Skate on all accords. That was just wonderful stuff. You can see how nicely their uh, internal communication just rolled out. A great flashbang to catch off both players, and that still puts them in contention for this overtime. A very aggressive yeah, Cabal push. He really does love wow. playing this position. He's able to find one. Snatchy up close, though. This time around, won't be able to connect the first shot, and this could give him some momentum. Looking at the shot onto his opposing AWP player, but Sparrow is the only Orpa left for Wizla Cracker right now. And the oh, skate no. bouncing back very, very quickly from this. Pressing the gas pedal full on. Oh, now they're in fifth gear, but it seems like Wizla Cracker want to be a bit out in the way. Want to stop them as they stand, but Dennis Law has none of it. Doesn't want any of it. Skade take home the opponents' map pick 16 to 14, as close as it could have been. It could have been an overtime, but it is not. Ladies and gents, we'll see you in overpass where Skade will be going to their home ground.
Welcome back, everybody. I hope the wait wasn't too long. Trust me, it felt a lot worse for me because as my co-caster and producer have exhibited, we have to deal with a lot of bad music here in the green room. Back again, of course, with Weasla, Krakow, <laughs> and Skade. Yeah. Skade already won up. It's a good thing the viewers don't know what music is playing on in the background right now. Mm. Oh, well. <laughs> well, back into the game, though, and Weasla, Krakow are up against the wall, right? Losing on their own map pick. They need to do it in tough territory. Skade's tremendously known overpass map you know it's not not an uh, not an easy affair for them quite the uh, qu quite the contrary mm -hmm. i want to see sk play this one out they've got utility on bubble and ships they've got a smoke only on ships actually and he's been dropped that one over because he's basically the uh, the, the whole package right he's got a p250 kevlar smoke and I want to see how we crack Krakow play this. Now, Goofy wants to aggress, and that's not going to be a very decisive duel for him at all. Dennis Law gets the first one, and on to B they go. There you go. Dennis Law quickly out of the map, putting themselves forward. And now with Krakow on the back foot. Sobel, good stuff coming his way. Doubles it up as well. Snaps you on a piece of that pie. Dreamer, though, wants it for himself as well. Dennis Law and, Den and Dreamer together taking on this round. Two kills per player, but Snatchy wants himself to triple his own scoreline. He's got one into his sights. The bomb will go down and Skade know how they want to play this. Just don't peek. Just stand still. It's all down to Snatchy and he's already been damaged up. They both take the trade simultaneously. They both go through the swing. Snatchy barely standing at this point. He's even going to be afraid to jump over that ledge. He's down to one point of health. They both peek him again. Skade, they just side swing together. It's uh, synchronized swimming at this point. Yeah, at this point, I'm not even sure if it's possible to run far away enough from the bomb at all. A gust of wind from the bomb explosion will take you out. And a P250 even flash is just enough for him to fall back away from this. Mm -hmm. Terrorists win. I really like Skade's ability to hold, uh, hold on to their horses, actually wait for the opposition to make a, uh, ma make a mistake, because they... They had a couple of players playing close to the A site, having some at attention there, and then you've got dead silence on the B site. That'll obviously encourage your players to at least push in short, and maybe if they're feeling lucky, they push into Monster. And when they do, they're going to be greeted by bullets. That's exactly what happened, and Wisa Krakow already off to a bad start. And with Skate already being one up and knowing that they are uh, the ones that have picked up this map, Wisa are not in for a treat. Ooh. Okay. Ouch. We see you, Snatchy. That, ugh, All right. That's not okay. I mean, looking at the previous map, we saw a quick knock around after the pistol, right? We saw Skade ringing out after Whistler Krakow's pistol win. So maybe we'll see history repeats itself, but on a different end. Back to the drawing board for Skade. Oh, that's a foot. Sobble. That's a foot. Yeah. Yeah, he knows. He knows where this is coming from. And this double boost, though, it gives up too much information. They've already made their way onto the site, and they're challenging Shore, but there's two players waiting on the other end. Goofy and Sobble trying to fight off. They're getting desperate. One for one trade. Snatchy participates as well. It's ships and Rain Waker. Now they've got weapons, but do they have the metal? Oh, Sparrow, all that remains, but quickly taken out of the server. Rain Waker just rains rain over him. And my word, Skade are able to come back from that quickly. Chaotic round with that boost, giving away information and taking too long to get the pick. And Skade get a clear advantage into this game. 2-0 at the start. Oh, that, that was way too chaotic around, man. They, there's no chance that it should have been able to come back uh, for they should have been able to come back from it after it was down to just two members. But Rain Waker, as you mentioned, just flooding the opposition. It's a crack out now back on pistols. You've got a Desert Eagle thrown in there, a couple P250s as well. Nothing uh, too out of the ordinary. Perhaps just going for a few pot shots. Yedkert being magnetic almost as an aide follows him home. Let's see what they've got here. Dreamer. Dinked up early. <laughs> Goofy oh, finishes no, things up. That was a team kill. That, well, that was a team kill if I've ever yeah, seen one. It was Dennis a bait. Body <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep him in. You're not going anywhere, mate. But thankfully, Dreamer had the lesser of the weapons, right? I don't think I only had a Mac 10, so it's like doesn't really the, matter. It was the most visual represent representation of you can have him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, let me in. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, Snatchy. It, rem it reminded me of like one of those ep one of those episodes of Tom and Jerry where um, Jerry would basically encourage Tom to uh, mess around with Spike, but then he would close the door behind him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Do you think our audience is Zoomer enough to not like get all the Tom and Jerry references? 
You know do, what? Do you, think it's, do you think it's that point yet where Tom and Jerry has stopped airing? No, like, I'm, I, I'm I can't imagine a world, world where Tom and Jerry no longer is as you know. That, that's the thing, though, right? Because like a lot of uh, a lot of younger people nowadays are probably watching, uh, like, it, it, or at least the cartoons they watch when they were like younger than the age uh, you should be when you should log into Counter Strike. <laughs> um, they, they, they're probably they're probably not watching TV. That's the thing. Like, they're yeah, probably watching web series. Yeah, the thing is also is that you know. Uh, this is a CS audience, right? So it's yeah. not it's not the youngest. I I assume we're yeah. we're also in the age caliber of the of our viewers, right? We're in and I'm, I'm in the same range. Yeah, keep telling yourself that. Yeah, <laughs> trying to think. I of... know, like, uh, yeah. Dude, come on, we're we're both boomers at this point. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> no. Twenty one is the new thirty. <laughs> Twenty one is the new thirty. Hey, grenades right off the bat. Attempting to shut off a potential boost here. Where's the Kraken already going for that? Heavy dedication from Skate here, right? Not ready placing any players on the other side to kind of obscure what the game plan is. Short needs to be their Seems next like approach. Skate doesn't, does, hasn't really um, shown too much variety on the T side yet, but that's also partially because they haven't had to. Sobble pushing into short. The Molotov also keeps them at bay, which means that it's a five versus four with absolutely no recovery at all. Sparrow, he's probably going to be their next target, considering that the only avenue they have left is into connector unless they want to wait out that molly. Yeah, they need to blockade one of the entries for sure, right? They don't want to go through that crossfire. And Sparrow's door has been opened up, right? So he could really just peek through here and have a lot of impact. Finally, the smoke will come away. So instead of facing him on, they've le they're leaving him be. But it's given an this opportunity. Is way too much control, right? Uh, yeah. If you look at the, the, at the side of Wisa Krakow, they've got three players already on B. They've got one to pincer in from connector, and they can very easily rotate Snatchy as well. So this has to be a flawless round from, um, from Skate, and that too in 25 seconds. There you go, spray down here from ship. Scoofy has to fall four against four in this endeavor, but Sparrow wants to bring himself back in. The smoke has dissipated, so now he can have the impact. No, Dennis Law, that's an aid. And just like that, they're running out of time. 10 seconds, they need to move into the site and quickly. So will hold down the line, but ships is quick to react to that Rain Waker as well. Six seconds, can you get on site on time? The answer to that is no, they need to take on the trades and they're given to them as well. Yetka can't find no. himself some cover and Skade, four and oh, on the board. That, I, I mentioned that it had to be some kind of flawless round in 25 seconds, but that was nothing short of sloppy, and it still ends up working out. Skade, uh, sorry, Wisa Krakow not willing to play conservatively at all. They had all the chips working out in their favor, but just being a bit too proactive in taking the duel, Skade ends up winning that out by a landslide. And look at how struck, how much of a struggle Wisa's economy is going to be in. Sobble on an M4, you got Sparrow playing around with the, with the scout rifle as well, but other than that, It'll be high and dry. And Skade, they're willing to play across the map this time around. Well, actually, their, their tendency is still to just you know, waddle around on B. Weasla, you're gonna have to do something unorthodox. It is something they they tried to go for. Sobble on top of the boost, wanted to catch somebody off guard. But Skade, seems like everything's working in their favor right now. On to B they go, and they've got, got Yetker to deal with. Yeah, Skate have got exactly what they needed here. It's, poof, okay, Bubble, not too, big, not too big of a fan of that. But still, the entry should be fairly simple. Bubble getting himself onto a wide angle here, but needs to be wearing in case of a multiple player cross. Sobel with the only player with a rifle is actually doing some damage here by getting two kills. Now, how much more can he find? He's actually pushing up substantially. Snatched it to the sideline. Bubble giving himself some cover with the smoke. The Snatch is getting ever closer. Oh, spots out a rifle. Oh, spotted himself the yeah, rain wake up. Put a bullet through the two eyes. Bubble as well. Piece of the pie. Skate, 5-0. and oh. They're Very, very similar to the style of Mirage. We briefly talked about how this was going to be super um, favorable for Skate when it did come to overpass. But, I mean, on the T side? Come on, man. We still look so pressured. And one of the most alarming things about that is that Skate are playing half of the map right now. They actually haven't gone towards any sort of A play yet. They've only been focusing on the B site, and we slip. They, they, they're basically in a spot where they've already given up five rounds. They're they're at a loss for, as to what they should be doing, and at the same time, Skate have a variety of different strats they could still pull out. You can see the stress starting to build up. 
On the side of the Wista players, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely looking lost right now, Pavlos. There's still a few smiles in there, so no hopes, but all across the board. The Poles can't feel too comfortable. It's... It's it's really the question about whether or not it's like it, 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 it's a smile of hope or if it's just a smile of defeat where you're just like yeah, this is fine and <laughs> and the server's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be quite something. There are a lot of mollies on the side of skate, so maybe that does come true for them. Let's see how this one works out. Early boost. Oh, oh just a nearly. little too late. Just a hint of being too late. This time around, those skates want to take their efforts elsewhere. Into playground they go, the bomb is there as well, but they still they still have a player from skate actually lingering around with both connector and a monster, which is going to keep Weasla on their toes, and because of, uh, because of the fact that Weasla are basically conditioned into believing it's going to be mostly a B-side play, I think the tendency to want to rotate fr rotate over from A is going to be a lot a lot bigger. That is not going to be easy for him, Bubble, to pick him up. There you go. Sparrow out of the equation. With the crack out. Now, with lesser players, Goofy damaged up substantially as well. One bullet should do it anywhere on his body. And he'll be picked up. Swift off his feet. But for sure, having the ability to still shoot his weapon is something he'll have to hold in high regard as he's one of the four players now still remaining onto it. Sobel. There's a smoke between himself and his opposition. But soon there will no longer be that distance, that gap, that trench. Because this is where the push comes in. Spots out the shadow first, able to trade it equally. But when your lesser players are already on the server, it's not going to be a favorable one. Now they can get themselves a bomb plant and uh, gain control over the site. Oh, Yedker, that is a nasty peak to <laughs> peak to deliver. There's still going to be Weasel with one foot out the door. Not quite sure if they want to go for this yet because Snatchy doesn't want to give up that AWP easily. Now there's a commitment. Well, there you go. Rainmaker will stop that commitment from happening. Snatchy is all that remains. One on two. Touches the bomb. Keeping it out. Dennis Law knows he's not there, but he's uh, baited out into the open and touches it once again. Rainmaker. Oh, he's running out of time. Perfectly played here by Rainmaker, even though... He does die eventually. Snatchy still doesn't have time to defuse it, which means Skade haven't dropped the ball once this map. It's still very fortunate for Weasla that Snatchy gets away with the AWP because otherwise I think this would be yet another round that just falters. So far it's been an all Skade game. There's been no retaliation whatsoever from the side of Weasla. We've seen a couple shots here and there, but most of the time it's just been, uh... By the way, um... A couple of those rounds got really close. So if you remember, if you recall the second round, it was actually Skade with only two players alive and up against four. So if Wisla had managed to get one of these rounds, I think their stride would have been way better, but Skade... Time and time again, not only are they just showing an excellent display of Counter-Strike, the stars also seem to be aligning for them. And that's just culminating into a nearly impossible game for Weasla. Not to mention, it's going to get even more convincing for Skate if the, when they do end up on the CT side, just by virtue of Snatchy and Sparrow being out of the equation. Skate, oldest trick in the book. Seems like B-Sight is the one that, that they're not going to let go of, but Sobble, he knows where the bomb is now. Oh, okay. Doubles it up as well before he ends up dropping. Dreamer's able to trade it back, though. Any advantage you found, guys, I'll, uh, I'll bring it back. I tell you, Sparrow finds some time to get himself a wraparound, though. And uh, skates seem completely unaware. Oh, got knives out. Goodbye, no Dennis Law. Dreamer, though, needs to recover from this. He's already got himself two kills, but he's not really going for the fight. He's got the bomb available for him. But now that he's where he's given warning of this position, he's kind of waiting for Rainwaker to make a difference here. Somehow evading contact, moving in towards dumpster, wrapping around towards bank. Oh, this is perfect. <gasps> but doesn't even go for bank. Oh. Drops towards the B site. An opportunity missed. But they could isolate him. One. Yeah, cut all by himself here. Spotted Snatchy giving away the position, wanting to... Re oh my word, it's recovered by Rainwaker. 
Stabs his what own is? hand on his knife, and now it's a one versus oh. one. Yeah, no time. Runs out of it, and all the Shpera needs to do is just hide. Weasel crack out finally. They fought tooth and nail for this one round. And man, they I'm not even sure if the odds are ever going to be in their favor again. But if you want to bet on matches like this one, go ahead and check out our partners over at Pinnacle. Low margins, high limits, everything you need for an, a, an excellent betting experience. But make sure you're only using that website if you are of age and if it's legal in your locality. Six to one though, Sk Skate, if you're on the T side from the perspective of Skate, ooh. Okay. It's gonna be hurtful. Yeah. Well, if you're on the T side, you're feeling super comfortable. I mean, you're basically playing for bonus rounds. You've got six in the bag. And we still are feeling super pressured. No, it's a big score for Skate. Very big score. And especially if they're able to run away with these early advantages. It definitely can't be comfortable for Whistler Krakow. And confidence on the CT side here in Overpass comes when you've got plenty of utility to hold your entries from, right? Well, I don't see much utility in Whistler Krakow's pack. Mm-hmm. Yes, I, it's completely unmatched. There's only three flashes available for Wisa Krakow, and they'd have to play them near flawlessly. Oh, did, did Sparrow spot somebody? I don't think so. Not in time. There was an elbow, but Sparrow doesn't have a clue. Oh, now he As does. Smoke fades. Yeah, they've got the advantage. Oh, but he's still able to hold his ground for a little bit longer. Dreamer slides in. <sighs> Smoother than I'd ever slide into DMs. Mm -hmm. And it's three, three versus four right now. Skate of a good idea of how they want to approach this. Only one player holding down this side and Snatchy. You wouldn't want another player to have uh, highest impact here. Can't block off that smoke. Looks to approach, spots that one player, but now they know of him and then still will be quick to react to him. The side is theirs. Sobel and Yedka in dismay. Wondering where their teammates have gone. Skade, unstoppable it seems. Yeah, if you're a waste issues, there's nothing you can do about it. You just want to back off. Really nicely played from Skate. It uh, it does, of course, come down to them already losing a lot of control off of the initial kill before they, they were able to even get any control of the B site. They just lost a player on the boost spot. Um, and just losing the second duel in Toilet. So, not really a particularly difficult round for Skate to pick up. But what is difficult, of course, Pavlos, is I'm going to uh, circle back to the topic of you sliding in DM. So... What is the pickup line you start with? Because if I'm in your shoes, I'm like, hey, girl. <laughs> you know what? I'm Zlatan. Like, come on. Like, there's a resemblance, right? And if, if, if I'm not Zlatan, at least I'm a son. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> come on. First up, I'm out of practice. I have a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So it seems like that yeah. one slide I did for back in three, the day. For all three days doesn't count. Yeah. yeah no, okay. All right. <laughs> sure. And second of all, when I do slide into DMs, it's not in the DMs of guards. It's in the DMs of you. So if tournament organizers are right. Uh, yeah. Well, that, well, that too, I guess. I mean, you you bear witness of the DMs I slide into because you, mm -hmm. you're the big receiver of them as well. Yes. I get all of those naughty stickers. Mm-hmm. I do have to say, though, I think my stickers are a little na naughtier. Yeah, no, mine are a little bit cuter, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Rainmaker, though, not too cute about that, really not allowing Yedka to do anything about this. And talk about utility, every single round is looking worse for Whistler Krakow. Obviously, you don't expect too much from them this particular round. They've got two hero M4s at play, but Skade are playing this very comfortably, playing it around, not looking to make any mistakes. Very resilient on how they want to play this out. If you're in Wiso's shoes, you're already doing the math on how much money you can save by not committing here. <laughs> yeah, the, the finance department over at Wiso, there is... There is hell to deal with there because they are constantly out of money. Um, only a couple of M4s for them to work off of. And over here, Sparrow, there's not a chance he doesn't lose his life to ships unless he tucks away. Yeah, not in time. Bring him the sheets. They've tucked him himself in bed. A little bit early in the day to go to sleep, but it seems that they've been able to do that very nicely. The sleep charm has come in. Dreamer, the final player to have a say in this affair. Skade. Honestly, the storyline hasn't changed, right? Because, quite obviously, Skade's performance hasn't changed. Yeah, it's, it's, all, it's all just been a landslide to, throughout this endeavor. And right now, I'm trying to personally... 
carve out anything that Wista could potentially do differently. I think a lot of it has come down to them not having early information, and maybe this play is exactly what they need. Sending Snatchy up early, close, but there's Nade to rain hell on him. Flashed out of his mind as well. He's got to back off, and now Skade. They've got control of metal once again. They're onto Fountains, they've, they've, they have a player in Monster. The conditioning is still there. Historically, Skate have continually pushed the B site. So we still, they still have three players ready and waiting on the B bomb site. And I think we still's inability to want to play proactively in toilets, especially with at least a duo, is, uh, is, is starting to cost them. They've, early on, if they can get Fountain control, if they can get Connector control, that, that just opens up such a big avenue for them to pincer them in from short and, they, and just make it a much easier duel. Well, we do see some productivity to this end this time around. Goofy is able to trade it back out. Deep Smoke coming their way. But he's actually pushing through it. This is a contact approach. This is too risky, Goofy. This is too risky. Oh. Bubble will definitely watch that. And it means they've opened things up. Now, an advantage they could have gotten there is just being missed. And the Yetka is onto the backside, allowing them to walk in. He'll be the caveat in the mix. Molly behind him knows he has to ease up just a little bit. Ships can spot him. Deny the plant. That's a free pick. Looking for the head of ships. Maybe able to find it. No. Deleted himself. And that means Sparrow is the only player alive. And he's already decided what he wants to do. The save is what he's going for. Oh, it's just such a dangerous trend. You've only got one round. Skate already heading over to double digits. And honestly, unless we used to show some differences in how they're picking up information, there's not really much they can do. Perhaps some more proactivity towards toilets. Maybe we see... Um okay, so I, I think one of the things that has definitely gone wrong for Wista is that all of their willingness to show aggression has been around the B side. And that's something that Skate have been defaulting towards. That's a, that's a position that Skate have always been watching. There, there's not a single round where they haven't had an anchor. Say, staying, outside, uh, staying outside Monster, being a menace, being available for the fake, being avail uh, available for the pincer. So... If you're consistently going to fall victim to that, that's almost guaranteed to basically be a free kill for Skade every single time. It's starting to hurt, man. Where's the crack out? Needs some, some sort of difference. Proactivity. It's not going to come this round. We're talking about a very short buy, but... Us wanting to see more efforts put into mid control. Us wanting to see things being opened up and other edges. Trying to catch Skade off because so far Skade have known how to respond to every play Wizzler Cracker brought out. And I mean, it is to no surprise. When you talk about Bulgarian teams, when you talk about Skade, you know how well rehearsed they are around this map and they know their it's ins and outs. And Wizzler Cracker were already on a down foot considering they'd be faced up against them this map. And the fact that they lose their own map pick on Mirage, not a good hint for them. Not a good note. And Skate slowly will find their way into this round as well. Sparrow is the only player with an M4. If you want to find any impact, if you want to find any damage, it's going to come from him. But is he up to the task? That's the big question. The Edgar doesn't get a chance to greet ships just yet. But in the meantime, Skade want to reroute their efforts all the way over towards B. And Whistler, they're not willing to have all of their chips on B anymore. Instead, they've only got a couple players, Sobol and Goofy, with pistols. With 40 seconds remaining, Skade, they need to make a move fast because as the time goes on, these pistols just get bolstered. Ooh, okay. That is something that could be done about this. Nade thrown to maybe give him the AK a little bit closer. But here comes the push from Bubble. The flash is perfect. But he's got reinforcements. Goofy is getting the job no. done. That is some damage coming forth. But Dennis Law is able to save his teammates his life. Three on two with two rifles on both ends. Streamer's not going to miss that shot any day Ten of the seconds. week. And Sparrow catches Rainmaker. Now it's down to one and one. He's able to find Dreamer as well. When did that happen? A cheek grenade to be thrown on site. Damage substantially. Sparrow wants this. No way it's a deagle okay, round to give them this win. No way. He, they heard the drop, therefore he knows that it, there's a potential for him to move towards the left side, but there's enough time for him to wrap around this now. He doesn't know where Dennis Law is hitting into. Back into the pillar. Sparrow moves onto the site, up on oh, top. he spotted him. Dennis Law to the back end. There comes the elbow. He's able to damage it. Draws out the pistol. Oh. But the drop comes in front of the eyes of Dennis Law. Puts the bullet between the eyes of Sparrow. Double digits for Skade. And they haven't even gone to the CT side yet. I think this is where you start to hang up the mouse and keyboard already, because if you've given up double digits on the T side, when you've only got one round yourself, that's that's just 
way too biased, and there's a good reason why the Pinnacle odds are looking like that. 1 to 36. If Wista Krakow can come back, there's going to be a lot of happy people out there. Well, a few happy people, because that's how odds work. Yeah. <laughs> Not everybody can be happy about that. Mm -hmm. Skate fans will be, of course. All Bulgarians out there. Rejoicing. Talking about um, storing glory for, Bul for Bulgaria when it comes to the CS scene, right? Big names out there. When it break into tier one. Haven't seen that happen. Maybe today. Well, well, today won't be the day, but could be a start for it. For this uh, newly arranged roster. It's good for Wizla Krakow, though. At the first instance, they do gain a lead. Snatchy as well will get himself another, which means there's two player discrepancy that they do have in favor of themselves. Could assist them to at least close some rounds in their favor. Ships, though, having none of it. Putting caution to the wind. This round is not over. Sparrow. Oh, that's a shot he had to hit. Weasel though, are we actually going to see Weasel getting some control back? Dennis Law still making it very hard. Snatchy peeks out of short. And this is the one round where Weasel actually turned up. Dreamer? I mean, Pavlos, I, I'd really like to be hyped about this, right? I'd really like mm -hmm. to be excited, but there's so little to be excited for when the, 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 the outcome of all of these rounds lining up is still 10 to 5 in the favor of Skade. It's really difficult, even... Even as a Wisa Krakow fan, to it's not have either. your oh, yeah. dreamer oh, connection yeah, dreamer. go through a saw. Okay, we wanted to give it a mm -hmm. we wanted to give it an opportunity to see how that one developed. But you're right, there's not much hope for Whistler right now. The thing is, though, we may be getting ahead of ourselves, right? Because considering the prospect of them getting ten to five, you'll be talking about them winning four rounds in a row. Now that is some tempo. And if they're able to carry on that temper to the next round, we're potentially talking about the closing of a gap. So if they have any sort of a chance to have as as good as a T-side as Skate is having right now, there is an opportunity. But, of course, it's not going to be an easy endeavor. Yeah, they've got to get every star to be aligned for them. They need to get these four rounds. They need to get the pistol round. And they want to make sure they don't botch anything after it. Once you've, once you've put yourself in the driver's seat around that 10 to 8 mark, that's when we can start having the conversation once again. But before we can get the words out, Ships has already had lost a big chunk of his life. Bubble playing it very close to Smoke. Yedker not expecting it, but he sees the barrel and he's able to close one out. Skate, now they're getting a bit sloppy. I'm a little surprised about that. Yeah, they are getting a little bit sloppy and they're paying for it, right? That push towards the Smoke, not the best idea. Skate easing up now towards the B site. Short position taken over by Dennis Law. Goofy up close as well. Look how was the crack have reacted to this, right? Every player kind of in close proximity. Molly up, smoke away to give them some space. <gasps> an opportunity, but Dennis Law finds a very quick shot. Maybe an opportunity for them to move into, but no. Take their time. Put was the crack out. At this point, not knowing where they're going to be coming from, Yetka with an off-angle, shutting down the AWPA of Skade, and all of a sudden, things are falling into place for the Poles. Okay. Exactly what they needed. This third round may be going their way. Rain Waker with an opportunity here, but with a three-player stack up, it's not going to be an easy one. Wizla Krakow with three. At least they start to gain some momentum. You can see that Skate actually went for something super unorthodox. It's going for a dry burst through the smoke, going for not too, too much of a fake or aggression, and... Their unwillingness to play in the confusing way they were before just tells me that now they're getting a little sloppy. But at the same time, I think part of their reason for going for unorthodox plays is because they realize that Wisa Krakow is already spooked, right? So going for these random smoke plays, going for these, uh, these unexpected pushes, perhaps that's going to end up working out regardless, simply because of how pressured Wisa are feeling. But that's not something that Wisa are going to succumb to. Instead... Continue to march on full with Skate. Yeah, this, this, this is not looking good. Yeah, it's just a mode. What do you expect, really? I mean, Skate want to do some damage here. But other than that, won't be getting anything. Might as well start a new discussion at this point. Okay, Dreamer. Ooh, was that a head? Was that a... Oh, he knew he saw a head through there. It's like that horror movie with a guy trying to axe his way into the into the bathroom door. But no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there goes another round. Where's the crack out? Really close. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember what it's called. But you know the reference. Everybody does. Yes. E everybody's seen that meme. 
10 to 5. That's still not the worst prospect in the world. That's still very reasonable to come back on. And I think one of the good, what, one of the things that will come off it is that we still will be on the terrorist side. So if there's a side you want to come back on, momentum-wise, it's probably the T side. Simply because it's so easy to break down the CT side economy. And I'm not counting Weasley out of it just yet. Sure, I did count them out when it was 10 to 1. But now it's looking much more reasonable. It's just not in the same ballpark anymore. Once you get to that five round mark, you got the prospect of winning a pistol and it can be a lot more off of that. But Skade, they want to push into short. They've got one member to contend with if they do decide to pursue smoke fading and Sobble's got a lot of work to do. And she grenades to come through here, Skade. Aren't gonna double back from this, okay. They know with an 11th round, their odds definitely will be increased for the CT side. Therefore, they are quite cautious with this one, not really making too many mistakes this time around. Not going for anything too greedy. It's a standard execute here, but they're all over their utility thrown out. But Bubbles able to hold on to his ground. Flash comes through. Goofy behind the pillar, still causing chaos. And he's bought enough time for the rotation to come in. Skate can't follow it up. That nade has really kept them back. Goofy not allowed to get anything else done by Rainmaker. Put to a sleep. Oh, Dreamer, what a swing by. Sparrow held no chance. Snatchy flashed up. Can't do anything about that. Yetka, though, puts on the carry pants. Rainmaker on the sideline. It fell off at the first instance, but still recovers from it. Snatchy trying to quickly recover from it. But Skade have done what was what was required from them to close this out as quickly as possible. An 11 to 4 halftime with them being on the T side. This best around is everything, Pavlos. If they end up losing it out, there's not a chance in the world that Wisa Krakow can uh, come back on this. If you give up the pistol, you give up the round after that. 13-4 to 4 on your opponent's map pick. It's, it's just, there's just too many win conditions that you need at that point. And with Dennis Law fired up, with Chips being a madman, just every single piece of the puzzle aligning, you can't feel too good if you're on the side of Wisa right now. But they don't want to get kicked out of playoffs, not in a 2-0 fashion when they've got so much to prove. They've been working at it from the start of this year, and they're dead locked onto their screens now. Out of the second half we go, Pavlos, and it seems like Wisa are a lot more favorable towards the A site. Yeah, they are. It seems like they've uh, found an opening as well, right? <laughs> Skade have actually dedicated a lot of their power towards the B site, and now they move in, and it seems to be a 5-on-5 five five retake, and then it still falls right here, so he does. Four against five. Good start here from Wizard Cracker for them want to keep the ball rolling very, very quickly. We said how crucial this round would be for them if they wanted to have any chance in the series and qualifying to the quarterfinals, but Sobel wants to put a stop to that. Wizard Cracker very nicely picking up two kills here. Sobel single-handedly taken down, snatching heads off of oh. the server. Very, very nice round here for Wizard Cracker. It seems like Wisa are always... They're always in contention to have the conversation, but they're not quite exchanging many words, right? They're always close to the phone, but they're not picking it up. And I think after a couple round conversions, the story is going to be a lot different. I think Skate will definitely be a lot more pressured once we head on over to seven rounds. And the reason it's a very respectable opportunity is because uh, I think with this round, if this round goes awry, there's not going to be much money on Skade, which allows Wisa to get away with a freebie, potentially. Smoke out. Just like I looked out. Not the best scenario for Skade. Definitely could do some damage with these pistols. That's what they want. At this point, we have to be cautious about every single round. Every round matters for Wizzler Krakow. No mistakes permitted. Let's get back into this quickly. CZ, very nicely done by Dreamer. Somehow picks up oh. two and is somehow still alive. Is able to reload and wants another piece of this fight. Goofy on the backside here is in trouble. Recovered by Dreamer. No. That's three kills going his way. Three weapons denied. And Rainmaker now is on a one and two and has a chance. Very reasonable chance for him to take it out. He's got Kevlar. <gasps> he's got a Galil. Snatchy. If he gets his first kill, oh. no. It's a, it's a shot, Pavlos. One on one. Sparrow knows where he's coming from now, and even AK could come into his hands. He's got a smoke as well. Doesn't entertain the idea of picking up the weapon so far. Wants to go for the plant. Smoke onto Catwalk. Knows where it's going to be approached from. Touches a bomb. Just a mid taunt. Sparrow will need to peek this. No kit, though. They're waiting for the push to come oh, by. Sparrow. Oh, dear. Confident though, here comes a push into no. the arms of Rainwaker. Dreamer, he needs a raise. He got three kills with a CZ before he dies, and Rainwaker is there to pick up the pieces. Does he have the time? Oh, it was so barely close. there. If Sparrow had waited half a second more, it would have been over. But no, that is three kills, man, from Dreamer. That 
I mean, I mean, you've talked about it already, but I've got to reiterate. You don't get away with multi-kills on a CZ-75. Sure, you're good for one or two, but three kills, especially when you're chasing after a rifler, you don't, you can't have the confidence like that. That is mad, and we get to see that one again. Completely flash on the second one, controls the spray perfectly, dashes over towards Goofy. Marvelously done. Snatchy had no clue where the Rainmaker was coming from, and Galil was picked up to his hands, and then the pressure was on. He was composed to stick by the bomb. And now his opponents come through. Whistler Krakow, they've got nerves right now. A lot of nerves. Punished on that long distance. Scale of getting this done. Murder at the playground. And Sobel is all that remains. Seems like the story's already written. Just a matter of closing out the final chapter. And, uh... Yeah, Danislaw is just a sign of the time. Sobel goes down. Three rounds remaining for... And we still don't even have... They're in the last vestiges of the game. They're the underdogs here, and they have no money on the terrorist side. And you think that's a voucher code from Skin Baron? No, that's just one of the one of the Wisa Krakow players smashing their keyboard, and that's the that's that, that's what came out. Hello, you okay there, buddy? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just uh, in shock on how uh, quick this game has been. I mean, maybe I'm jinxing it right now. Is that a way to cover for having your mic muted? No, no, I haven't been muted. <laughs> I'm, I've, I've just been thinking right now, what on earth can Wizla Krakow do, right? Mm -hmm. How do they get back from this? It's... It's crazy to think about. Yeah, they're just going for every trick in the book. The double run boost coming through. <laughs> you clear an angle, yeah. It, that's a fancy it, way it, to peek when no one is looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, you, you know that you're scraping the bo bottom of the barrel when you start Wait coming second. up with plays like this? Rainwick has been isolated because they haven't really been cleared out from toilets, which means there's room for him to work with. If they manage to find these skills here, it could be doable, but Shpera dies. Okay, he got spotted. Never mind. Finds reinforcements mm -hmm. of Dennis Law. There was a world where they were able to overwhelm Rainmaker there. He's down to four points of health, but thankfully his teammates are there to help him out. Two rounds away, the odds could never be more against Wiesla Krakow. Already a map down, two rounds away from giving it up 2-0. and oh. We can still bet on the odds over at Pinnacle. Low margins with high limits. Be, be sure to check, check out our partners. Now, Pavlos, there, there's not a world where I can predict or, or where I can reasonably foresee Wisa Krakow making absolutely no mistakes for uh, for 11 rounds, for t for 12 rounds. So I'm not even, uh, well, it can be 12 rounds. That would just break the mechanics of the game, but 11 rounds, like, I, I don't see it happening. Ooh, that's a head. Is there enough of then to sort of walk away from that and Rainmaker as soon as he spots a knee? Snatchy eliminated. So again, under a difficult scenario, Rainmaker though gets caught off by Goofy. And there's not much utility in the camp of Whistler Cracker, but scared wanna take this fight head on. Forty-five seconds on the clock. Weasla, they want to push in pretty much without any utility. They've got one flash on Sobble. Dreamer's on an off angle. Well, there you go. Sobble quick up onto Dreamer. Bobble holding his ground for a little bit longer. Skate have dropped the ball here. It seems like Weasla Krakow have won their trades, and now it's a two v three. And uh, Skate actually don't have any smokes or flashes. It's going to be a, a absolutely dry peek out from them. And I think they realize that without all that utility, they'll be having a very hard, tough time. Yeah, they're simply way too far away. Well, the Poles live to fight another day. Well, they'll be, get, they'll be getting challenged, those ships. Definitely not allowing them to save all their weapons. And that's an important thing to do, right? Considering Wizla Karaka aren't too confident economically. 
how did this happen from Skate? How did they use all that utility so early? Well, overall, I mean, the odds are, are for Pinnacle are exactly the same, right? It's still seeing that Skate, <laughs> yeah. I've got their way in. There's a crack, I can't do much. Difficult endeavor for sure. That's a, it's a tough one. Moving up on middle, Skay, they try to get some mid aggression going on. But Wisa Krakow didn't actually take any control at all towards Fountain before they, uh. <clears throat> before Skay have already abandoned it. It'll be a very, very slow round here. We still not willing to go for any any aggression at all. They're they're slowly clearing out toilets. They're using any piece of utility they can to avoid fights as long as possible. And on the other hand, Skate are really happy playing it passively as well. So you're seeing a team that has basically a bit of a standoff. And the reason that works out for Skate is because they can draw down the timer as much as they possibly like. Oh, this smoke denies information. Do they actually capitalize on it? It seems so, because the bomb's mate moving there. On top, Goofy. There you go, two kills quickly to Skade. In a matter of a second, Wizard of Krakow's hopes have just been put into the dumpster. And ships, yeah, unrelentless. I mean, you know, Wizard of Krakow, there's, there's nothing they can do. There's a barrel, I think they spotted Rainmaker there. But how did they take that fight? Doesn't matter though, Yetka can't quite connect it in time. The trade has come through, but Bobble is there to finish off that duty. Skade, 15 to 6. The first map was shaky, 16 to 14. Was like, crack, I couldn't just close that out, and Skade took the advantage of that. But now, overpass, completely different story. Yeah, we used to crack out. Just, just going to get desperate with these pistols. Just going to go out with a bang. I think they need an up upgrade in peripherals, right? Extra fire can mm -hmm. get them. 10% off using the code winter10 at extrafire.com, by the way, on anything they've got there. Yeah, probably not a good f time for me to tell you that um, I've been using extra fire products all along. That's why I consistently beat you. Yeah, that, that would make a lot of sense. Here's Wizzler Cracker, though, with the final attempt. The final chance. The final countdown. Yep, he's actually able to find some kills. No. They've actually made it happen. Damage substantially. Oh, ho, ho. The fast pace of the Tech 9 seem to have done the job. No, Dennis Law hasn't had enough just yet. Molly can be thrown to the site. He could definitely delay it. And the nade can come through as well. Dennis Law has to die through the smokes. It's all down to the Rainmaker. And one on three. And Whistler Krakow don't want to leave the they hopes know. hanged up just yet. Yeah. No, I think I think this round has been solidified. They're going to be saving the AWP. Falling back from this. Rainmaker will try and see if there's anybody chasing after him. But I don't think that was happening. Whistler Krakow want to guarantee this win goes their way. Little surprised that they've thrown all sorts of firepower at Skade, but the one thing that does end up working out for them is Tech Nines. But part of that is because uh, stylistically, Skade hasn't really been going for too much information. We saw them not really go for too much short control. Uh, they didn't have fountain control. They weren't willing to proactively play ar around long. And uh, with all of those, uh, with all of those things combined, it really leaves them vulnerable to a hard and fast push that they're simply not ready for. But eight rounds to go for Wiesla. And it's going to be a long and arduous journey that I simply don't think they have the hiking equipment to, uh, to deal with. It's a long road ahead. <laughs> it's a long journey. But if they take us through mm -hmm. it, then that'd be quite something. You can see that Wisa Crack are gr basically grasping at straws right now. They've got Yekker and Sobol on enemy weaponry. They really started from scraps. There's a small chance, and if there's any chance, we still are willing to take it. Skade doubling up on the beast side. They've got four members waiting to defend. There's a lot uh, depending on Rainwaker right now to be able to hold down the wire all to his lonesome towards connector. But in the, uh, but for the most part. I think Skate has a massive advantage here with how they're positioned, especially because Wisa really want to hit this B bomb site. They've got the bomb in a position where it'll be easily recovered to head on over to B. They've got two players in short, one in connector. Uh, playing around Monster as well. With a minute and ten seconds on the clock, of course, the world is their oyster, but it's uh, 
It's very likely they want to stick here. Ooh, very quick swing there by Sobel. Very necessary for Whistler Cracker to have a chance at this. To have a crack at this. Yeah, sorry, that was low hanging fruit. Had to go for it. <laughs> Still though, skate. Pulling back from the B site. Sort of think that Whistler Krakow are fake, faking what they're going for here. Bubble though is able to equalize things. And since oh, you're blocking the short side, so difficult for them to push through. Goofy with his attempt to move in. Bubbles able to take both down. Yetka trying to bounce back here, but the bomb has been shot behind Monster. And there you go. There oh. you have it. Skate 16 to 7. As simply as that, a little bit prolonged with Wizla Krakow's last ditch efforts, but it has been done. The Bulgarians will cross over to the quarterfinals of Pinnacle Winter Series 3. That was all around just an incredible game from Skade. Beautifully done. You can see the smiles on their faces. And honestly, they don't look tense at all. It didn't feel like a hard game for them. And for good reason. Throughout the, their T side, they had full control. It didn't feel like they, they were really playing a very competitive game of Counter-Strike at all. We saw Krakow consistently unable to fight back. Um, and sure, map number one was a lot closer, but when we headed on over to Skade's map pick, I think they definitely showed who was capable of playing better Counter-Strike, at least today. 100%. Uh, Skade definitely showed us who was the better team in that endeavor. A little bit shaky from Wizzler Krakow, obviously. The shakes have been going on th since the main switch, so things that they may want to be looking at, really um, capitalizing on control, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. It's... Um... They've got they've gotten themselves quite far, right? Quarterfinals not a bad result for them, but of course, knowing with Krakow, they would have wanted more out of this. Absolutely, but uh, now it's uh, it's going to be a very comfortable entry into the quarterfinals for Skate. So Pavlos, any closing thoughts before we move on to the next game? I think there is going to be a little bit of a break because this game, honestly, it ended quite early. We didn't we mm -hmm. didn't expect it to be uh, be over this early with a two and zero uh, finish. I mean, with how close these teams are on paper. But Pavlos, any closing thoughts before we move on to the next one? Yeah, Skate will have to face up against Dignitas in the quarterfinals. So that's an exciting matchup to look at. Uh, ahead, but that will be happening tomorrow. Next up is going to be Endpoint versus Gamer Legion, and that's going to be an exciting one. Myself and Wild Daddy, of course, will be taking part in commentating that for you guys. So make sure you guys are prepared for it. We'll be back as soon as it's ready in approximately an hour. See you right after the break.